Good afternoon. Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Paul Karitsis. Uh, today, I wanted to give you a demonstration as to how Thomas Lethbridge uh, found his pendulum rates. Um, I recently did an article and uh, have started testing uh, some of the um, some of the rates that he suggested. Uh, basically, all you need is a pendulum. This one here is one that I bought, but you can easily construct one with a piece of rubber um, or even blue tack. Uh, you need obviously a string and you need a pencil or a pacer or whatever, um, basically just to give it some stability. You tie one end to the pencil and then one end obviously to the pendulum and you can kind of wind it up or down and maneuver it that way. So. Uh, kind of works well that way. Uh, Thomas Lethbridge found his rates basically by this method. So he would wind it up to about two and then just start winding down and usually it swings back and forth or sideways. You need to position it on top of the substance or object that you wish to find the rate for. And then when the rate for that object is found, it goes into a circular motion or a gyration. So I'll show you the rate for copper, this one here. So this is copper. It's actually, well I found that it's not actually just copper, it's actually copper alloyed with aluminium because I received two rates for this. So and I'll show you how it works. So we'll start at about here. So all you do is you position the pendulum right on top there. You need to have very steady hands for this. So, and then you'll see that it will start swinging like so. Usually metals garner a really strong reaction from the pendulum, which is why I've chosen to use metals or demonstrate with metals. So I'm gradually unwinding. Whoops. Sometimes that happens. But the motion will be maintained. There we go again. Still backwards and forwards. Aha. Uh -huh. There's a change in motion there. So it's going into a gyration. And it's quite a strong one, which shows that it's had a collision with the auric force of the substance or object that we're testing, which in this case is copper. So basically all we do here is we take our tape measure whatever your preference is, and then we measure it. So, 23. It sits on 23 there. Twenty-three is not the rate for copper, it's the rate for aluminium. So, um, Basically, there's an obviously it's been alloyed with aluminium, so 
So it's found one thing. Now let's see if you can find the rate for copper. Again, as it moves out of the rate to which nature has assigned it, it continues its backward and forward or sideways motion. The circular motion apparently denotes an obstruction of some sort. There we go. Ooh. There's a nice strong reaction there. So what we need to do now is basically measure. This one gives us a rate of 32 and a half. So, which is the approximate rate for copper. Well, actually Lethbridge found his at 30. Though um, they sometimes vary, it depends on the individual. Um, there's quite a few different factors. Though I've tested about a good 40 things so far, or 40 substances and objects, and um, my rates have, do correspond with his. Um, they ten tend to be off usually by half half an inch by an inch. Uh, so, but there are various uh, things that that could be attributed to. So I will complete about five or ten more substances or objects, and uh, I will paste my results on uh, www.paulkaritsis.net. So I'll see you soon. See ya.